Well, this video is going to cover a concept called epistemological anarchism. It's a concept that was uh, proposed by Paul Feyerabend. I think I'm butchering his name because it's an Austrian name or at least a Germanic name. Go figure. <laughs> I can't say these names, but then again, I can't say my last name technically correct. And anyways, uh, epistemological anarchism. Basically, the idea is is that there are more ways to truth than what we suppose uh, there to be, which is what we see with, say, uh, the modern kind of narrative of our society, which is that only the scientific method can produce the truth or produce a road to the truth. And that just seems like, you know, an absurd concept to realize, uh, to, to realize all our knowledge only through one method. But yet that is kind of what a lot of people believe in. And I, I want to bring up the Venus Project supporters like the Infinity ES. He kind of talks about, in his meeting needs video, talking about you know meeting a need and a method to meet a need. Um, and I thought it was a very in enlightening video, at least on that, um, on that basis, at least that he recognizes there are two different things being sold in a marketplace, which is the method, the service, and the good, which is, you know, could be anything. It could be, in this case, he talks about caloric intake. You know, hamburger versus, say, a fruit salad, I guess was his uh, comparison. But nonetheless, what he doesn't seem to recognize is the fact that it has to be a free choice for it to be discovered. And why it has to be a free choice to be discovered? Because there are multiple ways to actually analyze a problem. Just because biology can describe the nutritional requirements of a living organism does not describe the subjective experience of eating or the culinary pursuits. It doesn't. They're, they're, those things depend on a whole different set of knowledge and a whole different way to perceive our world. Much in the same way as philosophy can describe the world in one context, for which then the physical sciences are even the more rigorous in some cases, mathematical sciences could not or religion, or art, describing the same world, but with, with much more subtleties, much more gray areas, and in some cases, discovering things which we were somewhat aware of, but never could fully explain, and, you know, stumble upon these truths right in front of us. You know, for example, the Big Bang Theory. This one is, I love this one, because this came from a religious priest of the Catholic Church. He called it the cosmic egg theory because everybody up to that point was talking about a steady state universe even though he was looking at the work of Edwin Hubble and saying uh, Dr. Hubble if we take the idea of the universe surrounding us accelerating as you say it is redshift then it must have come from a central point at some time in the distant past as a as a cosmic egg or a seed that was much smaller than what it is now. He was dismissed, not only by Edwin Hubble, but by everyone else. They thought that was crazy talk. But yet, Ed, uh, yet this one prof uh, not professor, but the one priest, his idea was taken and was explored to its extent to where now we have a full understanding, at least to, uh, uh, to the degree that we do now, of that there is this world around us that's changing, it's dynamic. And yet, it came from religious origins. It came from a guy with a deep belief in God. He was a priest, after all. And he, he really liked it because it fit also the concept of a creation story. Because, per, because perhaps maybe that cosmic egg was created, of course and therefore was the proof of God, at least beyond faith. And so when I look at science and I look at the word being used as it is today, not only by the Venus Project, but by people in general, in colloquial kind of usage, I kind of laugh my ass off a little here. It, it's disturbing, it's sad, but it's also amusing because it's so naive. Because let's look at the food issue, you know, again, culinary pursuits, of consuming food is not the same as the biological sciences who say this is the nutritional 
daily nutritional requirements that is necessary to keep you alive. They're not the same, but yet they're both describing the same thing, or at least they're coming to the same truth um, in some, you know, to some basic larger con uh, context. But if we follow the kind of naive thinking that you see a lot of Venus Project supporters and people in general take, you know, we have to give up one for the other. One must be excluded from the discussion, from the discourse. And that is the key problem I see with um, alternatives to, say, epistemological anarchism and the consequences of following things towards some sort of methodological, you know, monism. Where, you know, we just only use one method in this house, son, and if you don't obey, then fuck you. <laughs> it, it's, and I can kind of give you at least a, a tiny story kind of example of that, which is the fact that genetic research in the Soviet Union was prohibited because it was described as being a bourgeoisie science. That's another great example, I think, of non, um, non-scientific kind of reasoning and the consequences, at least in respect to the loss of knowledge as well. Just because you have multiple methods to find the truth doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to find the truth. In this case, they tried to use the same sort of Marxist reasoning to polylogism to justify that... Uh, the scientific inquiry and the discovery of genetics, especially Mendel's work, was invalid, and that it was a Lamarckian model of of inheritance that justified, uh, well, that could be justified scientifically. In fact, that's what they used as part of their agricultural five-year plans. They were trying to make wheat and corn and stuff grow literally in dry, cold deserts. And it worked one time and only one time because they used chemical fertilizers and they had a good year with respect to rain and temperatures. And then the next five years, it failed. You know what happened to the guy who purported the Lamarckian inheritance theory? They sent his ass to Siberia to die. They didn't even shoot him. They just let him suffer in the fucking cold in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> they, they weren't just going to have it. They're like, fuck you. <laughs> so... The long story short is, is that if you think that, you know, there's only one method to get to the truth, you probably are greatly mistaken. And that you should open your eyes to the wider world of our knowledge, because much of the knowledge that's even practical, such as agriculture, did not derive itself from the scientific method. It derived itself from human experimentation, which meant humans considering things other than what they perceived as being the truth. Meaning that they were capable and willing to take a risk and to bear that risk possibly on their own, to bear greater knowledge and, in this case physically speaking with regard to agriculture, greater fruit from which then they could prosper. And the only system that I know of that could conceivably integrate this general trend of human discovery and human imagination is the free market. Scientific so-called, in this case monistic sciences, will not allow for imagination. They, they disavow it, they prohibit it, historically speaking. And in doing you know, in doing so, they lose out a lot of knowledge. In fact, we did lose out a lot of knowledge this way. So, at the end of the day, I think it's better to be a supporter of epistemological anarchism than it is to be a supporter of epistemological totalitarianism, as it were. <laughs>